I am a product of two of the finest education systems in the world, one in Finland and one in Hong Kong. However, instead of standing in front of you today as the prototype of student 2.0 with, with excellent grades, which is not true, um, I am here to share my personal experiences on just how different these two education systems are and what the Finnish education system could learn from Asia. I received the first 12 years of my education in my hometown, Kuopio, Finland, and then I had the privilege to attend university in Hong Kong. If you look at these two education systems, they have roughly the same number of students and they have the same structure, but that's pretty much all they have in common. Um, in Finland, we, we know all the stereotypes. Finland uh, education system goes easy on students, does not give any pressure, does not do testing, and has very low hierarchy. However, in Hong Kong, it's completely opposite. In Hong Kong, it's fast page, it's, uh, it's extremely pressurized, the pressure is extremely much, and it also tests students all the time. In Finland, we like to think that, you know, because we already created a very, very good system and we're already number one, we don't really have to look outside our own system to learn from the other systems, especially in Asia, because um, Asian education system has its dark side, which I'm going to mention just for the sake of honesty. Uh, in Hong Kong, there were three student suicides, only on previous semester, only on one of the universities. Kids as young as four do really, really long school days and have a lot of homework. As for much as I'm informed, I was still eating crayons at that age. Um, <laughs> however, is there anything we should look from that system? If you look at the PISA results, we used to be number one. However, the latest results came in 2013 and we plummeted 12th in mathematics, were fifth in science, and our pride and joy reading is on the sixth place. However, the Hong Kong education system ranked second in all of those categories, only being outperformed by Shanghai. So, um, is there still something we could adapt from that besides the dark side? Um, there are at least three things that shields our students from that. First of all, we have the best teachers in the world. I have used their services for 12 years and I'm quite frankly very happy with that. Our teachers know when enough is enough and they won't engage our students in my, uh, meaningless busy work. The second thing is that in Finnish education system, we do not have the fear of failure. We do not divide students into groups based on how well they did on their previous exam. And the third thing that shields university students, there is this one sentence that 99% of the university students in the world do not understand, but you can say it in Finland, which goes, I didn't feel like studying, so I chose not to go and retake that exam. Not being educated in university in Finland, I don't understand what is do not feel like studying because you know you have to study. Uh, choosing not to go to an exam, I didn't know that was an option, and retaking an exam is a very foreign concept to me. So, you know, good that <laughs> it is here in Finland. Um, when we look at the PISA results again, it would be very easy just to say that. Um, it's based on the Asian stereotype. That uh, Asian stereotype is that people like to say that students in Asia uh, excel in difficult subjects because they're naturally good at it. However, let me tell you a little secret. There is no such thing as Asian stereotype. Also, there are a lot of students in Asia who are frankly quite you know, done with hearing it all the time. What there is and what is the first thing uh, I think we should adapt to the Finnish education system is that the students in Asia work hard. They start earlier and they work hard. When the 2013 PISA results came in, we went on full blaming rants on each other, like it's the systems or the teachers or, or something else, but no one mentioned that you know, if, if there is a group of students who work more and start earlier, obviously, they produce better results. Students in Asia take a lot of pride in working hard. There is no such thing as I forgot to do my homework or I didn't feel like preparing for that exam. The second thing is that we do in Finland that we should consider not doing anymore is that we divide problems into um, less difficult ones and more difficult ones. Uh, we, tell our, we kind of take a look at our students and then take a look like, okay, these students are not advancing very well, so you know, we give them these, you know, less difficult problems and 
uh, more difficult problems to the other students. Whereas in Hong Kong, I was only faced with uh, problems that I needed to work very hard on or I needed to work even more hard on. Not, there was not a single point where any of the professors said that like, yeah, maybe, maybe you shouldn't try these because you know, you're not quite there yet, especially when compared to <laughs> my other peers. They just said that like, Hannah, work hard. You, know, you, you have a lot of catching up to do. The third thing is that how we perceive talent versus how Asia perceives talent. Um, in Finland, you know, if there is students who are less advanced, I am like a very good example of that. I was never really a natural learner on many subjects. I would be given those, you know, easier problems and the bar would be lowered for me and they would just say, yeah, yeah you just stay, stay on, on this area. However, it was completely opposite when I went to Hong Kong. This, uh, the professors noticed immediately that I was um, maybe falling behind in some of the subjects and instead of giving me easier problems, they gave me more work and more problems. They didn't want to, they needed me to work extra hard because I needed to catch up with other students. They thought that lowering the bar for me would be causing me to fail even, uh, fall even more behind. And it also goes into the other direction. Um, we are in Otaniemi, which is the main campus of Aldo University, a very big proportion of the hardest working students of the age group come here to study after high school. However, when you ask from those high school students, like well, your, the students in here, that you, know, how you must have worked really, really hard in high school, a very big proportion of them says, well, not really. I kind of wrapped it up in two years, and then the third year I was just kind of waiting for the national exams, which is the only national exam we have in our system which is a very, very scary thought. Can we afford to leave the, the hardest working students of their age group just you know, hanging around for a year? When did we subscribe to an idea that there is a glass ceiling that says good enough? You've learned all this, now you can just you know, wait until you get to the next step of the education system. Whereas in Asia, there was like, I don't remember not even once any of my professors saying, okay, good enough, you did it. It would be, again, work hard, Hannah, you, you know. You have to go further. The fourth thing is that how we see competition. In Finland, we are very, very concerned about, of the competitiveness of our country, and I definitely agree. However, in Finland, it's not very okay to say that this is a competition and we need to excel in this competition. Whereas uh, all the uh, education systems that passed us in the PISA results, they sa it says in their education strategy that we want to be number one. Ta they take no shame on saying that out loud and saying that this is where we need to go. So, you know, if, if you need the bad guy who says this out loud, I'm, I'm more than happy to do so because I deeply care about our education system and our students. So. Quite frankly, in order to get Finland where it belongs, which is, again, the best education system in the world, we need to acknowledge that this is a competition where we need to excel. So there, you can quote me on that one. The fifth thing is that how we see fun and um, creativity in education. There, is, there seems to be the idea that learning has to be fun all the time. I would like to politely disagree because learning doesn't have to be fun all the time. We need to make the difference between short-term and long-term gains in, um, in learning. For example, did I ever had fun or enjoy when I was learning English grammar? Oh, absolutely not. But am I having fun now that I can make friends all over the world or travel anywhere and confidently communicate whatever do I want to say? So instead of, so in order to get that perfect happy moment of finally solving that math problem, finally playing that part of the song perfectly, finally scrapping together your essay that you first have, quite frankly, no idea about. You need to do a lot of work that, quite frankly, isn't fun at all, but it will be rewarding in the long term. Also, creativity. We should stop thinking creativity is just something that you know, comes naturally and, and, and is fun all the time. You might, have, you might have the most creative idea for an app, but if you do not how to write the code, if you do not what code you need, you will never be able to launch that app or tell anyone about your creative idea. But in order to have that code in hand, you once again need to work on your basic skills, work hard and solve even those 
more difficult problems. So in order to get Finland back to where it belongs, we really, really should, first of all, start valuing hard work. I'm not saying we're not doing that, but we need to step up our game because, you know, a lot of other systems are doing that. We need to stop um, dividing problems into more difficult or less difficult ones, or like that these students can be given these problems. We just, there just has to be problems that we work hard on. We need to change the way that we see um, talent, because talent is 99% hard work. We, st we need to say it out loud that this is a competition where we need to excel, and in order to excel in the competition, we have to acknowledge that this is a competition. And also, we should not be afraid of making learning not so much fun all the time, and we should not make the disconnection between creating new things and working hard. With adopting these things from Asia, I believe that we can create an education system where students do not only believe, but they know that they can solve any problem. They can learn anything they want. They have also the stamina to execute that amount of work because they have done it before. And armed with that kind of confidence, they can create, uh, break any barriers or go over, over any fences where truly the revolution of learning and creating new things starts. Thank you.